Hello everyone, this is Alex, USA Days. So uh, we're continuing with our QA journey. So we already talked about the course and so the overview. So today we get to the first module and it's gonna be probably the shortest one, but we will talk uh, about what is QA, what is quality assurance and where it is needed. So you will have uh, some understanding of the profession. Okay, so let's go. Um, what is QA and where it is needed? So QA stands for quality assurance. Goal of QA is to verify that specified requirements are met. So if there's a product, it has to have some requirements, what it should do, how it should do, how often it should do something, how much load can it take and so on. So this is essentially the requirements that's being set in place when the product is being developed. Quality assurance is the process that makes sure that in the end, when the product is out, it is following all those requirements and it is as much as possible bug free, okay? What are uh, QA engineers duties? Well, they may vary depending on the product because there are different industries uh, and you can work in medical, you can work uh, in military, you can work uh, doing something for the government, uh, you can work for hedge fund or you can work uh, for real estate company, all of those things, they will differ depending on what product you will be testing around that business. That may, may be a web page, uh, that may be testing their API or maybe something to do with their backend. That may be a wearable device. So maybe you're wearing like a Fitbit bracelet and you know measuring your steps, stuff like that. So a lot of different things. So essentially your duties uh, will vary depending on the product. But the main goal is to make sure that the product meets the requirements and has as few bugs as possible. What QA engineers test? Uh, so essentially the same thing as the previous uh, sentence. It's just whatever there is, right? So almost anything that has code in it can be tested. Coffee makers nowadays, X-ray machines, web apps, smart devices, routers. You can test connectivity. You can test localization. So if the uh, a game, let's say, uh, translated correctly and it sounds okay in the national language that it's been translated to, uh, you can test games. You can test mobile. You can test cars. You can test toasters. So essentially, anything that has code in it. Um, some of you might not realize the scale how much uh, stuff has code in it nowadays, but almost anything you take has tons of code. For for example, let's take cars. Let's take a new car, your modern uh, new car, and I'm not speaking about Tesla, just your average uh, middle class, uh, brand new 2022 car. And the amount of lines of code in the car is staggering. It will be around 100 million lines of code. So essentially you're driving a computer. You're not driving just the car. Um, and it goes with the other devices that are smart. There's a lot of code. So the more develop, the more products are being developed and more products or in the market that have code and require and go and support, the more QA jobs will be out there. Uh, so essentially what that means. That means I don't think that quality assurance as a profession is going anywhere. And it doesn't ma matter if it's manual or automated because you can't automate everything, right? Some of the things you have to move around, you have to interact with them. You can actually, you can need to actually wear them or you need to put them in one place and then in another, in your apartment, maybe you're testing a router or something. So essentially, I think uh, the the more we will, the more products we will have that are developed in the States and the more products we will have on the market that uh, have ongoing support and new features added, the more QA positions uh, will be there. So QA kind of grows exponentially, uh, same as the industry of development and development jobs. Um, they they're always talk about, you know, everything will be automated one day or uh, there will be no more need for coders and programmers. Code will write itself at some point. But all of those things just seem too futuristic. It, it's not It's not here yet. Uh, there are some codeless solutions for automation, but it's you still require a person to actually write those tests. Uh, so yeah, I don't. I, I think the in in the matter of like how long we will have this uh, as a profession, I think it's for quite a long time still. It's going to be very in demand. 
so who hires QA engineers? I think almost every modern industry does. Uh, so small startups need QA engineers. Big corporations alike, they need QA engineers. Uh, we can talk about banking, real estate, gambling, government, medical, uh, gaming. The list really goes forever, on and on. Any modern industry, uh, any product that has developers or some something done by developers for that, for example, for real estate, you might have an app where you actually search for local listings and so on. This will too require testing. Uh, for your x-rays, it will too require testing, right? If you go to a dentist and someone taking you de- your x-rays, before you have this device there, it's been thoroughly tested and it's been worked on and, you know, that all the outputs, radiation outputs, the imaging, everything is correct. So there's certain standards that had to go through and follow uh, certifications. QA is needed. Almost, I mean, almost any industry that has something to do with code, there's some product or part of it has some code, will require a QA engineer. Uh, why hire QA engineers? Why not let developers test? Uh, that's not a question that people ask. And the thing is, with developers testing, um, if they knew where the bug is, they wouldn't write their software to have that bug. So in the ideal world, you know, world maybe they could write code that doesn't have any bugs. But there's so many interactions happening. Uh, multiple developers working on the product. Multiple tools and u- uh, tools are used. So there are all this interaction that's happening between different modules and components of the product. The th- system actually starts breaking. Even maybe on the low level, uh, developers write something called unit tests and they have some coverage. But when you start bringing things together uh, and then bringing those things to different platforms, you will have all those... Uh, unimaginable uh, connections and interactions happen and that create situations that developer could not predict it. That's one thing. The other thing is with developers, uh, often enough, they, you know, their code is like their child in a way, right? So for them, it's kind of hard to find flaws <laughs> in their own baby because they, they made it and here it is. Uh, so for them, it's essentially even just psychologically kind of hard to test and make sure that their product works uh, as expected. Because for them, they they created it, they were reading the specs, they were writing according to the specs, and at the end, they think it is uh, working as it's supposed to. But when you come with uh, another mindset as a tester and you look for things uh, that were missed or how you can actually maybe interact with the system so you break this functionality, you start finding a lot of issues. So this is why you need uh, QA engineers, right? That's why developers can't test. Other thing that <clears throat> bugs in production cost uh, millions and millions of dollars. And, you know, uh, having major critical bugs will turn away users towards competition. So your business will lose money. Um, bugs may even put companies out of business. So if you have a company that manages other users' data, and maybe it's, uh, you know, some personal information and credit score and whatever. And there's a bug that system leaks out and all the data is lost and it's now open in public. Uh, you know, your company might go out of business. Yeah. Uh, and the bugs may harm end users. So imagine automa- automatically driven cars like Tesla running into pedestrians because they were not properly tested, right? Or imagine road navigation app taking you somewhere else not where you want it to, to take you and then you'll get lost and all of a sudden there's no gas station anywhere nearby and you get stuck. Or imagine that x-ray machine in uh, the office when you take an x-ray so it's just producing too much radiation and you know uh, it's actually harmful. So yeah, uh, QA engineers are definitely needed. It's not like we can just get rid of QA and start uh, just coding and releasing the product without making sure it works properly because the product going to be terrible and you know whoever gets the better product will take the market all right um so what activities qa engineers uh do at work what essentially QA engineers do so qa engineers they estimate prioritize plan and coordinate testing activities so what testing is required uh they prepare and you know give time frame how much time they will need to test something. They review requirements and specification, and based on those requirements, they create test plans and test cases. So essentially, you know, if product needs to do A, B, and C, you'll uh, write requirements, uh, you will write tests based on the requirements and make sure that what is happening. Uh, 
testers perform testing, QA engineers perform testing, so they make sure that product meets expectations and the acceptance criteria. They gather, analyze, and report test results. So, you know, sometimes you test on multiple platforms, multiple devices, multiple builds. So you have to have this information uh, accumulated, analyzed, and send a report out on how does it looks in general. Uh, you also open bug reports when you find issues and then uh, when developers take the bugs and fix the issues, you verify that the issues were actually fixed and that no new issues were introduced after the fix. Uh, sometimes uh, QA engineers will also build test beds, so configure environments that are required for testing. So if you're doing some connectivity testing and you need to connect multiple devices to a router, you'll have to set it up. Uh, you'll have to set up an access point. You'll have to connect the devices. You'll have to measure throughput and so on. So building test, uh, test beds could also be part of uh, QA engineers' responsibilities. QA engineers uh, participate in meetings, uh, groomings for upcoming stories and sprints uh, and do other team activities. So especially in uh, Scrum environments, and we will talk about different uh, testing methodologies and development methodologies, but in fast pace, small teams, uh, QA engineers provide a lot of input together with the team on how to uh, test things. You know, maybe they even can add some valuable opinion on how the end functional should look, how to improve it and so on. So in a way, you can say that uh, QA engineers also serve as a connection layer between developers and product owners. I've seen that a lot through my career. So you're essentially like a bridge to making sure that the requirements are read correctly and uh, implemented correctly. And there's no miscommunication between product owners and uh, developers. And you also, as a QA engineer, you add user perspective to requirements and suggest improvements uh, so that that's happening quite a lot too throughout my career. Uh, that is pretty much in a nutshell. Uh, as uh, If you go into a profession, become QA engineer and start growing with the profession, then you know you will have other responsibilities as a QA automation engineer or as that or so-called software developer in test. Or maybe you will even move into some DevOps positions from QA. But uh, that's how you start. And then the list of what you will be doing uh, as part of the team may grow. Uh, why choose quality assurance? Uh, I think quality assurance is unique because it gives you an opportunity to work almost in any industry that you want. So from software development, like building mobile apps uh, or working maybe on some uh, e-commerce web pages into gaming, into medical. So essentially any industry that has any anything to do with code and has requirements for product to be coded, uh, you can work there as a queue engineer. So you can choose a huge variety of places where to work in different industry. Uh, QA engineer is also a very good entry point into IT field. Um, it's not as extensive as coding. It doesn't require as much knowledge as a programmer would need. I mean, essentially you want to understand some code, you want to be able to read some code, but you don't have to write a framework and you know build an app from scratch. It's, completely different uh, level of skills that required for like proper development, right? Uh, so overall, if you want to work in IT fields and if you want to go into startups or work for bigger companies, maybe like Google or Apple or Amazon, uh, QA engineer is a very good position to start, a uh, really good position. Also, QA engineer, uh, as part of the IT world industry, uh, has great benefits, has very competitive salaries, uh, a comfortable work environment. You can work from home in many places. Uh, I wouldn't say you would be making as much as developer. Maybe you'll be making a little bit less, maybe 10, 20%, sometimes 30%. It depends on the industry. But uh, I think overall, it's uh, just really, really good uh, in terms of payout. Uh, it could be one of the best industries. Uh, if you compare amount of uh, time and money re required for education and then output of the profession and how fast you can get into the profession, I think QA is in top 10 for sure. All right. Uh, and the last thing, why choose QA? There's a lot of gross potential into, and you can become QA automation engineer, software developer in test. You can do DevOps. You can even uh, be a project manager or you can go into management. So 
as the more you work in the industry, the, the better you will understand it and you will shine and understand what your personal strengths are, not only as a QA engineer, but overall uh, what you can contribute in organization. Uh, you can definitely choose another path and switch. And QA gives you this opportunity. So in a nutshell, essentially, uh, this is... Uh, what is QA and where it is needed. Hopefully this was helpful. If you like the video, hit the like button, please subscribe for more. Uh, this playlist will have all other topics up coming up and we will have essentially all those blocks covered going forward. This was Alex USA Days. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.